we are, day two of ArcPad SF 2013. What are we gonna, how, how's it going? It's going pretty good, I had a good time last night, I got pretty tanked. Yeah, me too, me too, I'm, we got the free coffee rolling and I'm feeling better, I'm feeling better, I, I feel getting revved good. up. I actually feel like I have more energy to start today than I even did yesterday. I feel the same, I got, I got a good night's sleep, I was knocked out. Anyway, I think today we're gonna go deep into the galleries. We're gonna dive as rooms. deep as they'll let us. Yeah, see what, see how far they let us go. And and yeah, check out what's going on. Look at the art, maybe. Yeah, that's probably about yeah. the time we do that. Talk to some people. Uh, what else? That's probably about it. Maybe some Twister later. Probably tomorrow's a good Twister. Day. Yeah, I think tomorrow will be good for Twister. Yeah. Let's All right, some galleries. Yeah, let's get with us. Hello, what is our live? Still at ArcPad with the lovely ladies of Mirror's Gallery, Katie and Bailey. Hi. You two are probably distracting people from the work. Oh yes. Yeah, Always. I figure that. Uh -huh. Figure that. So we, we are the art, actually. I yeah. Fully. Uh -huh. God's yeah. art. Yeah, um, right. we're for sale. <laughs> oh, really? Uh-huh. Yes. Like, both? Yeah. Yeah, together. <laughs> we'll yeah. talk later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how's it going, for real? It's good, it's, it's good. It's, uh, it's weird being on this side of the art world. I yeah. must say, last year I was on the other side, and now I've crossed over to the dark side. Dark side? Of yeah. selling art, and um, it feels good. I'm it's treating you lie. well. Dark yeah. side's treating you well. Yeah, it's great. Awesome. Um, I really, I'm down with Darth Vader. <laughs> so. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so how? What's the feeling in the air here? Is there are there people buying? Are there some sales yeah, happening? Yeah, I sold some cardboard over there. Sweet. Um, oh, for four hundred bucks. It's really great. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I think <laughs> I think everyone's really overwhelmed with how much art we could fit in this room, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah, it looks great in here. Looks yeah, great. yeah, that's yeah, really fresh. cool. Uh, yeah, the work is really diverse and stuff, so I think it's giving people a lot of options, which I've heard is what people like. Options? In America? Yeah. Lots of options. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. specifically right. in America, in California. So, yeah, <laughs> that's really what's going on. How Beautiful. are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing great. Yeah, no, we've got a room good. up in this, this biatch this year. Yeah, we got our own room. So <laughs> we don't have a table outside next to the pool. <laughs> so, Mirrors Gallery also has a space over at the other art fair, mm -hmm. Art Market. Are you yeah. guys the only one who did that, or did someone else do that? That seems like a rarity that yeah. you would have a, a room at each fair. Not that, the, yeah. that it's a competition, but it it's seems weird. like you pick one or the other. Usually that's how it goes. I mean, the Art Market and Art Pad are competitors with each other. Uh, but Art Market's the only one with protest outside of it for unfair wages so I think we've chose oh. the better one over here nice. but you know we just wanted to like broaden our horizons like our gallery has only been open for six months now so we're uh, yeah, we're yeah just, you know we're trying to like, out. yeah exactly out. I think it's Definitely. more about um, spreading the word that we actually exist so you know we'll sell work too hopefully <laughs> <laughs> so you said you made this the switch from artist to gallerist at this point yeah. um, what did you draw from being an artist that helps, or is like all that knowledge totally different and you have to forget it? Um, no, I don't think I had to forget it per se. It's kind of weird because most of the work that we display here is painting, um, and that's not really something that I've done or really experimented with in my own You don't practice. even like it, right? Oh, I mean, I hate painting, yeah, as you guys maybe remembered in my commencement speech. It's a dead art. Plug your commencement But I still think there's an appreciation for dead art, you know? Right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, people still like it, I guess. You know, whatever. <laughs> YOLO. And Katie, how about you? You're just hanging out interloping? What's your... What's yeah, your... I'm just schmoozing and uh, enjoying promoting the gallery. And you're involved with the gallery as well? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm actually, I, I'm a personal assistant for the guy who owns it, Paul Hemming. Nice. Yeah. Great. It's really rad. It's good to have her here. I can't be alone on this one adventure. Yeah, I'm happy to help out. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Bailey, Katie, thanks so much for talking with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Man yeah. Dark side. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> nice Let me know when you ever want to come over. Yeah. I'll hook you up. I'd love to. Yeah. I'm dying to whore myself. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. We're not live. Chris and Tim, Maury, and Luke of Unspeakable Projects, which we're going to speak about. No Let's speaking. speak about it. No speaking. Nah. No speaking. <laughs> do one of those mute interviews. Mm -hmm. right? So we spoke with you last year and loved what you did as we do this year too. Nice rock and roll aesthetics. You came back. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we ask ourselves that every day. No, come on. It's an awesome art fair. Um, and uh, we had a really good time last year and um, love the fact that they're supporting um, emerging art galleries and there's really a space for that. I think at the art fair level in San Francisco. So. Here we are. Great, great. Is there a is there a different feeling this year than last year overall? Um, for the fair, yeah. Room. 
the fair, or different, a different vibe out yeah, there? Yeah, I, I feel like the programming has gotten, uh, has really stepped up. Um, it's, it's pretty kick-ass. Uh, so yeah. I think we're seeing a lot of, a more of a mix of both um, emerging and established galleries than, than there was last year. Um, you think so last year was skewed more towards established, and there's more? No, 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 the other way around. Okay. The other way around, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's sharp. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, indeed. Where is unspeakable at in that spectrum? Where do you consider yourself? We're de I mean, we strictly represent emerging artists. We have um, almost no... Uh, we have some approaching mid-career artists, but not there yet. <laughs> so we're, our focus is really, really on, um, on newly emerging art, and uh, you see, you'll see all that. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, Thanks for having us in here. It looks awesome. Maybe we could look at an artwork and you could like tell us about an artist or something. That might sure. be good. Like we'll put the camera on an artwork and then you could talk about it. Yeah, or great. Something. I'll tell you Give about us. two. Um, okay. We have one new and one um, one returning um, that you might like to see. Okay. Let's All right. do it. What about this? Could, could you tell us about this one? Maybe maybe you could get a shot of that while Mari. <laughs> tells us about this artist and the art. Yeah, so this is a work by um, Jason Fritz, who's a San Francisco artist. He does a lot of work on um, uh, queer culture. And um, these are origami paper funeral letters spelled out, uh, that spell out you on a plot of real grass. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he does work on um, trying to kind of reframe the um, history of queer culture and AIDS um, away from this kind of uh, morbid focus on death. Um, so you see a lot of kind of playful celebratory versions of <laughs> this kind of thing. Uh, and the perpetual cleaning fountain is his as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, actually both these pieces. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, they're really great. Um, and then what else do we have that's cool? Is that good? Yeah. Thank you, Maury. Hey, thanks a lot. Definitely. Yeah. What do you say for your part? Tell us. Unspeakable <laughs> projects. Unspeakable projects. Unspeakable projects. Unspeakable projects. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you both. Thank you, guys. Here we are. What is Art Live 2013 in Monique Melange's space, right? Did yes. I get that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're a uh, uh, dealer from Chicago. That is correct. Uh, what brought you out to ArtPad SF? Uh, well, I've been doing tons and tons of art fairs all over the world and um, I'm friends with a lot of dealers here in San Francisco and they've been kind of nudging me over the past couple of years cool. and um, it's one of those things like I just you know I did Miami, LA, New York, Brussels and I figured why not San Francisco. Do another Francisco. one. Throw another it's one on the pile. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. So how does it compare? How's it stacking up for you? Uh, it's a very interesting fair. I have not done a hotel fair since I first opened like 11 years ago. So it's a little a bit of a throwback, but yeah. I'm happy that I'm actually not sleeping in the room. Um, I can right. actually afford to get my own hotel room. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so that's a good change. But um, it's a great vibe here. It's like a really cool fair. It's, you know, like a really funky and cool hotel. Um, you know, I, I like being ingenious and in how you can hang things in a weird space and not yeah. just in a white cube. So, um, you know, so far so good. The crowds were great last night. Great. Met a lot of interesting new people and, um, you know, kind of introducing some of my artists to different dealers out here too, which is kind right. of part of the part of the job. Definitely, no, that's fantastic. Do you work with primarily Chicago artists, or is it? Um, actually, no. Um, the artist who's behind us, who does the woven paintings, is Kendall Carter. Um, he hails from New Orleans, but he's based in Long Beach. Okay. Um, and I first discovered his art at an art fair in London. So, wow. um, zero Chicago connections. Yeah. Um, I, Ebony Patterson, who does the figurative work in my booth, is a young artist from Jamaica. And um, then there's the photographs, the burning house photographs, and the video are by a bona fide Chicago artist named Carrie Schneider, who grew up outside of Chicago, went to the School of the Art Institute, but now, of course, she lives in Brooklyn. Right. Um, so, I get to to get to a lot of Chicago artists because we have such great art schools, right. um, but they don't always tend to stay, but I also am kind of looking for artists wherever my travels take me. Great. And what's the art scene in Chicago like? A brief summary of some sort? Um, it's getting better. Uh, you know, it's still, even though we're, we're a big bona fide city and cultural destination, it's still a little bit regional. 
Um, but it's our institutions are incredible, and our architecture is amazing, and our food is, is amazing. So. It's, we've been building it up, and I produced this thing called Gallery Weekend Chicago, which is modeled after what galleries in Berlin do, where it's the contemporary galleries band together and say, hey, out, to, out of town art people, come here and don't just see me in a hotel room or see me in the three walls of my booth or wherever. See my bricks and mortar space. And we've been, um, we're coming up on our third year of that in September, and we've just seen like a significant uptick in people who want to come from you know, anywhere from San Francisco to Hong Kong, so it's... That's great. Is that an idea? Consolidated gallery district? Because it's a big city, right? It's a big city. There are two main districts. Um, there's West Loop and then River North, but then there's just galleries scattered everywhere. So when, when we do this weekend, we actually do, like, we rent a bus and then give, like, a really good tour and just make it easy for people. Um, but yeah, you do have to, you do have to get around, but public transportation is great. You know, taxes yeah. are plentiful. Right. Um, so, you know, I like it there. I, cho I chose to open my gallery there. I'm not from Chicago, I'm from Canada, and I moved there to go to grad school and then just never left. Cool. Nice. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for talking yeah. to us. Yeah. We'll maybe check back in with you as the weekend progresses. My pleasure. All right, here we are. What is our live art pad? 2013. Room 57. Room 57. We got Machi. What is our live room? Machilowski. I know how to yeah. say it. Say it for me, though. Maciej Makalowski. Maciej Makalowski. And yeah. Nelly Furtado? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Maciej is an alum of SFAI and a fine artist, if ever there was one. Thank you. Nelly is a current student. How's ArtPad? ArtPad is fantastic so far. Yeah? Are you thoroughly impressed by the work here? Um, not yet, but I'm waiting for that moment to happen. I think it's going to happen soon. <laughs> it's just about to happen. Maybe it's happening right now. Yeah, this is impressive here, though. Um, sometimes artists say they don't like art fairs, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of that seeing that commerce uh, and art in the same place freaks them out. What, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a little <laughs> too much. It's not, it's like it's like going to like a big convenience store of like lots of little packages on shelves, and then you can't decide what you want, and you can kind of get sick of everything, and you just leave. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <Got> it. <laughs> what about you, Nelly? Any thoughts on that? I, agree. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like ArtPad maybe it feels a little more laid back. It's not it's not as much like a trade show maybe than it's, some other art. It's fairs. a lot better than the one at Fort Mason, which I was just like. Yeah. yeah? No, Tell us about yeah, it. Tell it. We haven't gotten over there. Tell us about what you think about Art Market. Art Market. I saw. I was there like two years ago, so I don't know what it's like right now. But oh. it was just it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't seen it. We don't know, but was it? Did it feel maybe more more, more sterile or something? Or yeah, what, it was really you, like what the difference. Be really comfortable art that was meant to decorate things as opposed to like you know, like it, you, you kind of had to turn your brain off to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a few years after an MFA. Um, you're still practicing. Practicing every day. Every day, and how is it? How's perfect? How's life as a art graduate trying to make it in this amazing city, so to speak. The first year was a deep hole of depression, but after you get to it at home, it's, it's really great now. Yeah. 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 Like great. losing the whole, like, when you're in school and you have, like, a routine and a schedule and people motivating you, and it's like, you lose that and that's hard, but then you work on it and you get it for yourself and you, and then you realize, I can do this by myself and that's a really good, wonderful feeling. You find your way. Yeah. Is there anything you could plug, Machi? Do you have Do you have work in a show or anything going on in the city? Oh, okay. Um, I am part of an art collective called The Basement, basement.cc, in the mission. But I don't. It's not really like something I can plug because it's just us working. But oh, oh. Basement Radio. Basement Radio. I like Basement Radio. Oh. Um, Tell us about sometime it. next week. Don't know what day or what time it will happen, but it happens every week at some point. And you have to find me on Facebook to find it because there's no website for it or anything. Cool. Basement I listen radio. All the time. Yeah. One week though, I tuned in and there was reggae playing, matching. That was actually probably my set. That was not good for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a big. That was a bad night. Yeah. Almost, almost <laughs> lost it that night. I was sorry about that. Supposed to comfort me and get me through. <laughs> okay, next Keep time, what, what do you request? I'll put on anything but reggae. Seriously, okay. I'd rather Toby Keith than reggae. Okay, we'll put on some Toby Keith. Toby Keith just for me. Right. So, Nelly, you are an undergraduate art student. Yeah. Is that true? Um, walking around here, being around San Francisco, dealing with artists of various kinds, do you regret every minute you 
you know, spend as an art student, or are you full of hope and vitality? Uh, I think I change every ten seconds. Yeah, based on what? Who I'm with. Uh -huh. <laughs> the space I'm like in. this beacon of positivity. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Um, all right. Well, anything else you two want to plug or say or do? What should the world know? The world should know that tomorrow is going to be all right. It might not be great, but it's going to be okay, and you know, it's still going to be a good time. Especially when you have friends like these. Arr, there we go. Bring it in. All right, Mache and Nelly, two wonderful people, good artists. Search for their names. Thanks for coming on. What is Art Live? Thank you. All right, here we are in uh, the Guido Mouse's space. That's the Mouse House? That's mouse the House. Mouse House, yes. Mouse House 1 and Mouse House 2. Welcome. Oh, yeah, you're taking over the fair. No, Two rooms. the fair took me over. <laughs> and we're here with Guido, and we're here with Amanda, who is uh, who curated the show. You, did a, you decided to do a curated show this year, right? What's it called? Painting, painting. Painting, painting. Painting, painting. And what's it, so what's that about? Uh, it's a show of 22 artists. It's about painting. We're looking, painting. At, yeah, we're looking at contemporary practices of painting and, and how contemporary artists are sort of approaching the medium. And so the video with Charlie Sheen, that's an afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> so the videos are by Houston-based artist Mark Flood, who has a solo show up at our gallery right now, which is called Facebook Farm. His practice is quintessentially painting, um, text-based painting, and uh, the, the stunningly beautiful lace paintings, uh, but his background, of course, from the late 70s, early 80s, is culture side, which is a punk group, and uh, even today, for each of his solo shows, he would create these crazy videos, and this is what we brought in. Great, thanks. Awesome. It seems like there was a lot of press around that show. I, I felt like I saw a lot of press about Mark Flood's show. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mark Flood uh, got uh, great exposure for our gallery because he just finished a, a, a great project, uh, which was a group project, though, at um, uh, Galerie Hotel in Paris. Before that, he had several shows up at Luxembourg and Diane and Zach Foyer in, in New York which were extremely uh, successful in, in reviewing people like Richard Prince, collect his work, etc. Great. And his next 18 month out of Birmingham, Alabama would be solo shows in Berlin, London, and New York. <laughs> wow, good. Good. <laughs> so, yeah. Like a test <laughs> round. Yeah, that's beautiful. Good for you and Mark Flood. <laughs> good for Mark Flood. And very good for Birmingham, yeah. Yeah. That's so, great. we know you are a repeat offender. You were here last year. Now you've doubled down this year. Um, how is it? It's really good. So. Of course, you know, we, we see our two rooms or so, but the, the idea was really, since last year, I kind of, you know, was smitten and really positively impressed by, by the interactions with visitors. It's a very slow pace, and I, I say that in the most beautiful way, in the sense of people will read up on you, they will read up on your program, they, will, they really want to know more about that particular artist they're interested in, and they really want to make sense in this idea of possibly collecting an artist. It's really much more for the long run, I have a feeling. So during last year's fair, we did a couple, we placed, a, we placed some work, but we did a tremendous amount of work with these people after the, the fair, which was really very rewarding in a sense because it really turned into, uh, into long-term relationships. So this year, I really felt like we got to bring something else to these possibilities because this setting here is, is of course, you know, so relaxed. It's so, it can be really about the art. It is so unart fair in the sense of it doesn't have to be sterile. So my idea was, what can I bring to make it even more interesting and different than last year? So I had um, read about Amanda because she had created several projects here in San Francisco, which included one of our artists, Gerald Beck who uh, was a Paul Krasner uh, recipient, who went to McDowell, who had just now the Bemis, uh, Beam Center for the Visual Arts on Nebraska Residency, and opened his solo show yesterday night. And after this, he goes to the Rauschenberg Foundation for a residency to Captiva Island. And she had included him in, 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 in a show of hers, and that's how I had noticed her. And I was really intrigued, because there's something beautifully um, unexpected about how she creates shows. She's also reviewing, she's a great writer, she's also reviewing music. She's a re reviewing music and I thought this was this beautiful idea of, you know, I think that painting, quintessentially painting, but the art world is such, 
it's not a sterile kind of like stereotype. That's that's where this happens. This what this is very academic. This is something we grow into unwillingly. I, 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 I'm, I'm sure. And I think that there's this beautiful idea of, of what can painting be, what can art be. There's this drifting back and forth of possibilities that are also multimedia in the in the true sense of. Yes, here is video, there is music, there is sound, there is, you know, you bring it all together. I think that's what we should be much more looking at and we would find ourselves being fascinated by it. Yeah. So I said, okay, how can we do something together? I said, can you create a show? Here's a roster of my artists, you know, with painting that I'd like to see in the show. Um, I'd also like to support Michel Pratt, who's a San Francisco artist uh, who shows here in, in, in an art market. Um, I love her work because she's very outspoken and, and very, very powerful artist, a very powerful woman. And in addition to John Banks and the Bay Area artist, we show, and we had two solo shows with him, and published his book. His book. His book. His book. <laughs> his book. And uh, so I said to Amanda, you know what I would be interested in also? Maybe you can suggest also a couple of artists. So she, su she suggested two San Francisco based artists. Uh, I didn't know. Jake Zeman and Jacqueline Norheim. So it was a great moment of discovery really. There was a lot of read, reading up to, you know, a lot of, and then we said, okay, let's ship the work and then we go through it. And of course, Jacqueline and Jake were being local, came also in for the installation. And so we had a great, great time. It was really, it sounds probably childishly naive. It was a wonderful time. It was a lot of work, but it was a great time because it was more about, yeah, hey, what if? Yeah, so it was really, as much as the thought of the show was about the possibilities, the what ifs, rather than the no, we have to. Yeah. It was great, a great experience. Well, before awesome. we let you go, um, Amanda, you are a freelance curator. You yeah, just pop around. Any um, advice for other aspiring curators and things about how to weasel your way into people letting you use their space, or how do you pull that up? Um, well, I always approach a gallery with a proposal and more than half of my artist list already confirmed, so that's a really good way because people don't people have a harder time saying no to something that they can actually visualize. And as far as advice for young curators, no one's going to do anything for you. You have to do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And what about for young artists? Young artists. Yeah. Young how do artists. they get? How do they get in front of well, you? Know, I, in front of you. I have a great little program that I run out of uh, the Royal Nonsuch Gallery in Oakland. Um, once a month, I host curatorial office hours. Oh, cool. Where I invite a totally open remote studio visit session. So I get 30 minutes with each artist, 14 artists for a whole day, like eight hours. And, oh. Yeah. So it's a really good way for me to get outside of the like art school sort of. Yeah, that's thing, great. Circle that I'm Check out Amanda's yeah. office hours yeah. at the Royal Nonsuch. <laughs> Well, Guido, Amanda, thank you both very much. We love thank the mouse house. Thanks a lot. And what do you got there? Thank what you. What is it? This is Peter Fox. Shut the fuck up. We needed to put that up in front of you at one point. That was oh, me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs>this is the same artist. Last same year artist. we had a piece called George's Bone, which was like right. a little George Ricky, um, kind of like uh, having, having fun with a little George Ricky reference yeah. there. Um, this is also another kinetic <laughs> piece called Telephase. It's really kinetic right now. It's, it's super yeah, kinetic. It's getting out of, it looks like it's getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, is actually, it's that moment where a cell is about to split in two. But blown uh, right, up by right, like a right, trillion times scale. Okay. So right in that when that part when the when the, uh, the cell splits and splits and splits and it becomes two and it's that long thin piece that's in the middle here and I don't know the scientific term. It's called the telophase. Right. And okay. It's about got to it. become two separate organisms. So that's that's what he's referencing here. It is meant to, to blow around and, and be uh, and be kinetic um, and react to the wind in such a way. It only weighs about eighty to one hundred pounds, so it's very um, light. Right. And thus it has a little bit of that shift. Um, yeah. The, 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 the breezy conditions here are causing it to come off its little rubber bumper there, but it's right, nothing right. major. We'll just, we'll tweak it so it'll 
It's not a public safety threat. It's not. It's not. The thing can move around quite a bit, and when I'm just yanking on it, I'm just kind of centering it back in its anchor there, so it it, it sinks up with the rubber thing. Got it. At some point, he may just need to to kind of bolt that in a little more. So it just, right. It's what it, it's shifting like this is all it's doing. Tighten it up. Um, yeah. Tighten up the bone. Or it's, it's not beautiful. a bone at all. I guess no, no, because of last no. year, I just assumed it was yeah, another yeah, bone. Yeah, you're <laughs> referencing a bone. It looks like a, yeah, it looks like a bone. But no, it's no longer in our bone. We want Genentech <laughs> folks to come and check this thing out and put it in their, uh, in front of their yeah, uh, seriously uh, campus. Um, Make it happen. But yeah, Matt's great. San Francisco sculptor. Grew up in, born and raised in San Jose and then worked in San Francisco. Great, great guy. We've shown him the entire time we've been open in our gallery. Super talented. A lot of whimsical, fun, you know, uh, forms and sculptures and things like that. I don't know if you guys are coming into the room, but we're in room 14 here at our pad. Room 14. Uh, room 14. You've been here all three years, ago. yes? All three yeah. years. All three years. We've, How's we've, this one go? We've anchored down in that room. Um, it's great. We love it. You know, Heather and I, or my partner Heather Markson, are on the selection committee for the fair, so we're really proud to have really um, gotten some very good quality galleries here from around the country and also, you know, from the West Coast, some art fair veterans, people that know how to present themselves well at an art fair and bring some really good, talented work, um, good artists. Yeah, we were receiving yeah. good feedback from the galleries you brought in. Yes, yes, so absolutely. And last night was great. We got a lot of nice compliments about how the you know the fair is evolving and getting a lot, getting more you know more and more tight. Um, that's that's I seem I think that seems obvious. Seems to be the word. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. I think in our interviews. I feel it. As yeah, well. I think it's, yeah. Yeah. it's good. I'm impressed. Yeah, it's good. And then you can come out. You can see a couple of rooms. Come on, relax in the sunshine, and then go back and really take the art in in a, in a really casual setting. I love the rooms with the furniture out. It really gives you a chance to experience it in, in a not kind of a white cube booth type of thing where you're going right. from booth to booth to booth. It's, yeah. it's kind of a nice way to, to sort of experience the artwork in a personal way. I agree. I love that breathing room of this out, yeah. outdoor area. Yeah. And then you, you know, then you decide when to go back in. Exactly. But thanks for being on again. Of course. Uh, of course. Always a pleasure to be on. Yeah. Good luck what with the non bone. Life? Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's a non bone. Yes. Don't manage worry. that thing. What is it? My toes. The cell won't actually <laughs> split. Yeah. It, <laughs> it won't tell phase any further. Yeah. It's a nice night out and. Uh, Looks like people are starting to get a little bit Gatsby down there. So that 20 steam going on. Day two of the Wolf Report. Art Pad SF 2013. Hey, how's it going? I can't do my own howling. That's something that has to be done. That's your logo for me. Uh, it's all good. Today was, uh, let's see, the highlights of today were the uh, art and technology panel. Um, the thing about this fair is that it's it's heavy, I think it's heavier on like performances and videos and panels than the other fair, although I haven't reviewed their uh, um, their list of, of, of activities, so I don't know that for sure, but it's something that I like about this place. And I realize that like, I have to hire a social media person in my gallery because I have essentially no relationship to the internet. I'm very old fashioned, you know, I just like, I, I sell objects and I represent them on the internet but with no meaningful strategy. So I'm losing it there. I, I yeah, once... you gotta Instagram this shit, man. Exactly. Yeah, I Instagrammed some of my show and there was a lot of likes. You got a lot of likes of your gallery. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So I'm basically like, I've become a slave to like likes and thumbs up and like uh, retweets and reboots and yeah. Like, Hashtag Wolf Report. I can't. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I, I really like. I'm a person who already has a deficit of uh, of uh, self confidence. So like the. The, 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 the slavish pursuit of likes and stuff so it seems like it might be designed to like ultimately make me sad. Um, yeah, well, hire someone else to do it and don't worry about it's it. It's exactly, I'm never going to consult it. Well, what I find out about the art world is that not only do you have to build a gallery to sell objects, you have to, as a secondary business, build an online entertainment experience. The only way f for r which can be paid is by like maybe getting sponsorship. So it's like a secondary business that actually almost eventually could become the primary business when objects fade away. And uh, you know, it's just like this idea like uh, that it, I know a lot of people who ma that makes angry like, oh, now I have to do this other thing, but that's the job. That's right. the situation. Like either you know, acknowledge it or not. So that was like 
part of day two, and the other part is I went to Art Market, which, you know, is Max's fair, and it's beautiful. He gets yep. better every year at, like, designing... Oh, really? At designing fairs. This one is, like, a very beautiful version of the White Booth Fair. And um, it reminded me, two things. A, it was like, wow, I really like that fair, and it would be so fun to have a big White Booth. And there were right. a lot of people there. And B... It's also like, it's like a very good version of the generic fair. And it's like, reminded me of why I wanted to work on this fair, because this fair has a shot at being like, unique, San Francisco, local, like eccentric in a sort of performance video way, which is sort of going in that direction. You know, they're trying to kind of like link it to the tech companies. It all is more specific and meaningful. And I thought like, oh, if our fairs are gonna come to San Francisco, they should be, Specific and interesting. <laughs> Just watching some guy walk by with a hammer. He's so angry. It's like, okay, I hope it's going all right. I know we'll get soon somehow. Um, so it both like it both it both made me jealous because of the like sort of elegance and the conventional right, sense of that right. fair, but also like it reaffirmed like why I I'm working here and why I've tried to persuade these guys to do this fair in a certain way. You know, and how right. like important it is to have something unique in San Francisco. Yeah, no, this fair feels very San Francisco, for better or worse. It's unlike it the fairs that I've been to. The Aqua Fair in Miami and its heyday was like this fair, right? right. I feel uh, that without way. like the attention to programming and the tech companies and stuff. So this fair is a right. chance to be something really interesting, but it's 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 a lot of hard work. Yeah. I'm serious. We talked to one gallery that was at both fairs. They're at both fairs. Is that weird? Do people do that? Is it a San Francisco gallery? Yeah. Which one? Was it both? I mean, yeah, no, it's, it was, there was, I can't, there was, someone did it last year, and um, I don't remember if it paid off or not. But right. Yeah, right. covering all your bases, yeah, I guess. Yeah, cover all the bases. Yeah. Cool. I'm just not that ambitious. Oh, sorry, Tim. I actually work with you. Busted. No, I know. I know. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Stephen Wolf. We will be checking in with you tomorrow. Good. See what's going on. I'll be here. Wolf report. Oh! All right, so this is a wrap up of day two, Art Pad SF 2013. I'm here with David Naylor. We had a good day, huh? It was a good day. A lot of good interviews. Talked to some cool people. Saw some good art. Definitely, it looks like there's some, there's some real there's some action going on tonight. We got the, the modern painters party, and there's some kind of 1920s thing going there's on. Some sort of 20s thing happening, and uh, I don't know. I think it looks like it's only going to get crazier from here. Yeah, yeah, it's ramping up. People are getting gaps beyond and going wild. So we'll see you tomorrow and let you know how that goes. Sign it out. Sign it out.